let's start by taking a look at the finished product. We took our previous coin flip application that did not have any animation in it and have added this little bit of animation to give the coin a little bit more flair when it's flipped. To understand how this animation was accomplished, you need to understand how to use a sprite sheet like the one shown here. A sprite sheet consists of equally spaced cells of an animation typically drawn at different angles. Here, for example, we have six such animated cells of the coin. You might be thinking to yourself that this particular cell is smaller than the rest, but instead, try to think of the sprite sheet as being all equally sized with some having more white space than the others. This sprite sheet is numbered 0 through 5 representing the six different versions of the same coin. Although the cells shown here are square, typically sprite sheets consist of rectangular segments. Furthermore, even though this sprite sheet is one-dimensional, it is typical for sprite sheets to have multiple rows as well as multiple columns. Looking at the geometry of the sprite sheet, we're going to say that the top left corner represents 0, 0, while the top right corner represents the entire width of the sprite sheet. Note that the Y coordinate is always the same in every cell because we only have one row to work with. In some Android animations, the robot not only moves its arms and legs, but also appears to move up and down or side to side. But in our simple app, we're only going to deal with the coin's rotation in a fixed location. As you may have already guessed, the key to tricking the brain into thinking that the coin is rotating consists of taking each of these cells and showing them in rapid succession in a circular manner. To accomplish this, we're going to add a sprite class to our previous non-animated version of the coin flip app and the entirety of that sprite class is shown here on the left. I'm going to walk you through some of this code now. The code is relatively straightforward except for these two lines of code which form rectangles and the entire secret to understanding sprite animation rests with you understanding how these two rectangles are created and used. When the sprite is first created, we're going to pass it a bitmap and the number of columns. We need to know the number of columns in our sprite sheet because we need to know how many different cells there are inside of it. We're going to store our own bitmap and then we're going to also keep track of how many columns there are. We're going to set the initial frame number to zero, so the first frame we're going to display is going to be this one. We're also going to keep track of how high the sprite sheet is in this height variable and this width variable is going to refer not to the length of the entire sprite sheet which is shown right here but instead is going to refer to the length of uh, excuse me the width of one particular cell and to get that width we're going to take the width of the entire sprite sheet and divide by the number of columns so here we would divide this width here by uh, six each time the onDraw method is called on this sprite, we're going to update the frame count. The frame count is basically going to count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then back to 0 again. Note how we're using the modulo operator to go back to 0 after reaching 5. We're then going to paint the background of our screen, or our coin view class, a nice light purple. And then we're going to figure out how big our canvas is. We need this information in order to rescale this coin to fit our canvas. First, we're going to calculate, though, what our top left corner of our animation point is going to be, and that we call the frame x coordinate, and to get that, we're going to take the current frame number and multiply the width of an individual cell. So, for example, if we were showing this particular cell right here, we would move over the amount of one particular uh, frame, and then we would start with this point right up here on the top left. These two rectangles, the cutout and the rescale rectangles, are the key to sprite animation. We need to go over these carefully. The cutout rectangle represents the portion of the sprite sheet we are currently displaying on the screen. The first two numbers in the parameter list represent the x and the y coordinate of the top left corner of the cutout, while the next two numbers represent the bottom right corner of the cutout. Here you can see that because we're advancing the frame each time the onDraw method is called, the frame x coordinate is going to keep changing. The reason that the m height variable is not changing for our application is that we only have one row in our sprite sheet. If our sprite sheet had multiple rows, the m height number would also be changing each time we call the onDraw method. While the cutout rectangle refers to the sprite sheet, the rescale rectangle refers to the drawing surface or canvas. 
In this rectangle, we need to point out the top left corner and the bottom right corner of the space on our canvas that's reserved for drawing the cutout rectangle. In our application, we're going to use the entire area of the purple rectangle shown for our drawing. For that reason, we have put 0, 0 as our top left corner and the entire canvas height and width as our bottom right corner. Finally, the draw bitmap method uses both the cutout and the rescale rectangles to figure out where and how to draw the sprite. The last parameter here is null, which is a paint parameter because we are not changing the color of our sprite. Thank you.